booktube mishpacha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish mother, and I am here today on Thursday of all days to film a tag video. Um, I was very kindly tagged in the spring cleaning tag by Hannah at Hannah's Books. I will link her channel down below. And I went on a brief um, jaunt down a YouTube rabbit hole in a hunt for the original creator of the tag, um, which was a channel called Book Syrup, which apparently no longer exists. And the original tag video can no longer be viewed. So alas, I cannot link you to the original video, but I will link Hannah's video down below. So again, thank you, Hannah, for tagging me. Um, so the first question in this tag is the struggle of getting started, a book or book series that you have struggled to begin because of its size. By the way, if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I'm referring to the questions. <laughs> um, so for this, this uh, prompt, I picked The Essential Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. This is a book that is still on my physical TBR um, that I will read at some point, but it's pretty intimidating because it's um, over 800 pages long, and I feel like Emerson is a person who really benefits from careful and close reading. You can't really just blow through an Emerson essay. <laughs> You're not going to get anything out of it if you do that. So the fact that it's so long combined with the fact that Emerson is someone who requires kind of careful attention and study, um, I find intimidating. I will read it eventually, but it will certainly be a very slow going process whenever I get around to it. Okay, question two, cleaning out the closet, a book and or book series you want to unhaul. So, uh, I actually want to unhaul a book that I just finished this morning, which is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I really disliked this book, and I will talk more about why I disliked it in my Friday Reads video tomorrow, so stay tuned for that, but I want to unhaul it because I didn't like it, and I don't need to keep it around. <laughs> Um, question three, opening windows and letting in fresh air, a book that was refreshing. So for this prompt, I chose the collected poems of Theodore Retke, which I read, uh, I think in April, um, because I basically kind of never knew what was coming with that book. He, um, writes poems of all different styles in terms of the actual form of the poem. Sometimes it was blank verse, sometimes it was a sonnet, you know, sometimes it was an ode, sometimes it was, you know, something with a concrete form or not, um, sometimes it was abstract, etc, etc. Um, and it kind of really kept me on my toes because I never knew what was coming next, and I found that pretty refreshing in terms of all the different experimentation with style and language that he does in that collection. All right, number four, Washing Out Sheet Stains, a book you wish you could rewrite a certain scene in. So I picked for this um, Agatha Christie's book, Murder at the Vicarage, which is the first in her Miss Marple series. This was the first, yeah, the first book. Um, and I read this back in March. I wouldn't necessarily rewrite a specific scene in that book as much as I would just put more Miss Marple throughout. <laughs> Because I found it so charming, and I, I think I ended up giving it four stars, um, but I just, I wanted more of Miss Marple, so I would only rewrite that to have more Miss Marple as opposed to less. Uh, question five, throwing out unnecessary knickknacks, a book in a series that you did not feel was necessary. So I don't really read a lot of series, so for this prompt, I instead picked a book in an author's published work thus far that I felt like does not measure up to the rest of that author's work. Um, so I follow Nathan Englander, who is a contemporary Jewish American author with interest ever since I read his debut short story collection for the relief of unbearable urges. And to date, he has published two collections of short stories and three novels. Um, and in January, I read the only novel of his that I had not yet uh, read, which was The Ministry of Special Cases. And to me, this really did not measure up to the rest of his work. I, it seemed sort of somehow lacking in the Jewish content and themes um, that are, are kind of central to the rest of his work, and it just, just didn't quite work for me. Um, so if I were going to take out a book, it would be, it would be that one. Uh, question six, Polishing the Doorknobs, a book that had a clean finish. So. Last year I read two books by Richard Russo and they were the first um, by him that I'd ever read. So one was uh, Straight Man, which was quite funny. 
Um, and the other was sort of a more serious uh, novel called Chances Are that was, that was just published last year. Um, and both of them had very clean, neat, pat, nicely tied up endings. Um, and I, I kind of feel ambivalent about that in fiction, to be honest. Like, on the one hand, I find it sort of satisfying when all of the loose ends are tied up, but on the other hand, I think you really didn't have to tie up all the loose ends. Part of the beauty of a, of a novel is that some things can be left a little ambiguous and you don't necessarily have to tie up all the, all the, loose, all the loose threads. So um, they were very neat and pat and yeah, I felt, I felt sort of of two minds about that. Um, but there are good books. Uh, number seven, Reaching to Dust the Fan, a book that tried too hard to relay a certain message. So for this, I picked a book that I read in February, which was David Leavitt's The Man, or Levitt, The Man Who Knew Too Much, which is a biography of Alan Turing. Um, and in case people don't know this, Alan Turing um, was the man who cracked the Enigma code during World War II. He also... Um, was a very brilliant mathematician and, com and logician and computer scientist, and there is a prize in computer science named the Turing Award that's named after him that's basically like the equivalent of like a Nobel Prize in computer science. Um, so anyway, so, um, and he was also gay but closeted um, throughout most of his life because of the time period in which he lived. Um, and in this biography of him that I read, Leave It, I think, tries way too hard to make Turing's sexuality the focus and to connect it to basically everything else that Turing does in his life. Um, and I felt like that was really a reach because, you know, on, on the one hand, Leave It would say that, you know, Turing himself was very sort of apolitical in the sense that he was not you know, out there fighting against injustice or anything like that. But then, you know, he would leave it would talk about some kind of journal article that Turing had published on, you know, some math or computer science problem. And he would try to connect whatever Turing was writing to Turing's own struggles as a closeted gay man. And I just, I felt like it was a reach. Um, and then the last prompt in this tag is number eight, the tiring yet satisfying finish of spring cleaning a book series that was tiring yet satisfying to get through. So again, I don't read many series. Um, so instead, I picked all of Toni Morrison's novels. Now, I, I read all of Toni Morrison's books in a graduate seminar that I took in 2011. And I had literally never read any Toni Morrison <laughs> before I took this. So talk about trial by fire, right? Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of exhausting to get through all of her all of her novels in in the course of one semester um and then after after that was com after that seminar was over with um i continued to follow what tony morrison published after that so i read her last two novels home um and god help the child and so i was glad to be able to have read her her completed uh works even if it was um even if it was a lot for one semester's worth of work, um, especially since The Bluest Eye became one of my all-time favorite novels. So definitely satisfying in that respect. Um, so yeah, that was the spring cleaning tag. Um, I am going to tag to do this if they would like to. Um, Paula at Draw Your Book, Sandra at Pull Down the Moon, and Doris at Aldi Books. Um, and if you wanna do this tag and you've not been tagged in it, consider yourself tagged. Um, so I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. Uh, if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in this tag uh, and, and have thoughts about them, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Um, and I hope you are doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until my Friday Reads video tomorrow, would it kill you to call your mother?